Hi, welcome to Tamara's Timeless Beauty, where we talk about all things pro-aging, anti-aging, lots of skincare, some fun makeup, and some health and wellness sprinkled in. If this sounds interesting to you, I would absolutely love it if you would hit that subscribe button and join our community. We are sharing tons of ideas, lots of interaction, lots of support, and we're having a lot of fun here, so I hope you join us. With that being said, today's video is sort of spontaneous and unplanned. It, I've been up for about a half an hour. All my skincare is done. No makeup except for a little lipstick to make me look presentable, and I'm on my second cup of coffee. And I have had something on my mind, and it is sunscreen in makeup. You know, as we enter the summer months, the days are getting longer and beautiful and sunny, and people are talking about sunscreen. And I cannot tell you how many times I hear from friends, family, coworkers, oh, there's sunscreen in my makeup. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can explain how crazy that makes me. So here the topic of the day is SPF in sunscreen, pro or con. To me, it's a huge con. My preference would be to have zero sunscreen in any foundation because my opinion is it actually does more harm than good. Let me tell you why. Okay, I operate on the premise that 365 days a year, rain or shine, you should be applying an SPF of at least 30 on your face. It is a cloudy day here in Minnesota. I will be working indoors most of the day. However, I'm surrounded by windows. I will probably be doing a couple of errands and get sun through the car window. I'll probably be walking my dog. To me, sunscreen, at least SPF of 30, is a non-negotiable. Well, what, what if I have it in my makeup? Isn't that good enough for a cloudy day or a day where I'm gonna be inside? Let's look at three of my foundations. Put my glasses on, okay. L'Oreal Pro Glow SPF 15. My favorite, the Healthy Foundation SPF 20. And Flower Beauty Light Illusion SPF 18. First thing you'll note, is the SPF is low, okay. Second thing is all three of these have a chemical sunscreen in them, octanoxinate which may not bother some people, but for me, I really do prefer a physical sunscreen, zinc and titanium dioxide. The reason I don't like chemical sunscreen is A, it's irritating to my skin, and many people find that it breaks them out. Sometimes you'll hear someone say, oh, that foundation breaks me out. My guess, it's probably the sunscreen that's causing them to break out. Physical sunscreens are non-sensitizing and they don't break you out. So if I use my physical sunscreen first and then apply my healthy foundation, the octanoxinate does not bother me because there's a barrier between my skin and the octanoxinate. If I went in with the foundation with no sunscreen, it would be in direct contact with my skin and I feel like it would potentially have sensitizing. It could potentially sensitize my skin, okay. So number one, the SPF in foundation is too low in my opinion. Here's the kicker. In order to get the SPF of, 20, of 22 that's listed on the bottle, you would need to use a quarter of a teaspoon of foundation on your face. I'm gonna show you how much that is. So let's talk about the Flower Beauty Light Illusion. And the reason I'm using this foundation for reference today is I am gonna be wasting a quarter of a teaspoon when I measure it, and I'm actually decluttering this. However, when I was using this foundation, I used typically probably a pump, maybe a pump and a half for a light medium coverage. I have seen people on YouTube use two pumps for a nice medium coverage and a really pretty finish. I have even seen a few people use three pumps for a much more full coverage. So sort of the 
foundation dose is one to three pumps, okay? How many pumps does it take to get your one quarter of a teaspoon that is required in order to achieve the SPF that's listed on the bottle? Let's find out. Okay, light illusion, quarter teaspoon. Let's measure it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tap it down to level it out. Eleven. Okay, that is a quarter of a teaspoon. That is eleven pumps. Can you imagine what you would look like if you applied 11 pumps of this on your face? It would be gross. So if it takes 11 pumps to achieve the SPF of 18, one, one and a half, two, or even three pumps is giving you virtually no sun protection. But yet, Oh, I have sunscreen in my foundation. I'm good. Wrong. So those are the reasons I don't like SPF in foundation. It gives people a false sense of protection. Um, a, the SPF is too low to start with. B, octanoxinate can be very irritating to some people. And C, there's just no way you're gonna use enough to even get the SPF that's listed on the bottle. So let's get a foundation that has a higher SPF. It Cosmetics CC Cream, SPF of 50. Fabulous, right? Nice high SPF. You should get some pretty good protection on this. SPF levels are, are regulated by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. So think of the SPF as a dose of a medication. In order to achieve the, F, the 50 SPF that's listed on this um, tube, you would need to use five pumps. You know, I was watching Kate the Great Beauty the other night and she bought It Cosmetics CC Cream for the first time. And she said when she, she'd been playing with it for a few days and she said when she first got it, she put two pumps on her skin. She said it was way too heavy. So then she tried one pump on her skin and she said it was still really, really too heavy. So when she demonstrated the application on her video, she used a half a pump and it was gorgeous she's a beautiful woman anyway but the um but the it cc looked really pretty on her when she used a half a pump think about this if this was a medication and again this is fda regulated so the dose for a 50 spf is five pumps if this were a medicate let's say this was a pain medication and in order to achieve pain relief you needed 50 milligrams a 50 milligram tablet one day you just didn't have enough, so you took a five milligram dose. Would you expect to have any pain control whatsoever if 50 milligrams is what helps your pain? Five milligrams would do absolutely nothing. Same thing with this it CC. If you're using a half a pump, you're getting virtually zero sun protection. Yet, in your head, you think I'm using 50 SPF. Those are the reasons. I wish they would not put SPF in foundation at all. It gives people a, self, a false sense of protection. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna demonstrate to you how I use, instead of my foundation as my SPF, my SPF as my foundation. So here's the Elta MD Tinted Sunscreen SPF 44. It Cosmetic CC Cream SPF 50 they are both dosed exactly the same. What I mean by that is it takes five pumps of the L to MD to get one quarter a teaspoon to cover your entire face. And again, this is five pumps to get the 50 SPF. So I'm gonna show you on one side of my face, just the L to MD tinted sunscreen. And on the other side of my face, I'm going to do a, a customized blend of the two for a little bit extra coverage which for most days is enough for me. So if five pumps is one quarter teaspoon, then for one half of my face, I'm gonna use two and a half pumps. Okay, two and a half pumps. I will need my mirror. 
Let's see. I do put my mineral foundation on my eyelids and my under eyes. There's the Elta MD, there's nothing. What I like about the Elta MD, it has a very light tint just to take the white cast away. It's a skin-like tint, um, really no coverage, but somehow it does have a slightly perfecting effect on the skin, which I really do like. Right now it's very tacky and glowy, and but in about 10 or 15 minutes when it sets down, it'll be a nice radiant finish. What I do most days is I will blend for my entire face four pumps of this and one pump of this. But in order to demonstrate one side of my face, I'm going to use two pumps of the Elta and I'm going to mix it in with one half a pump. Oh gosh, that's almost out. That's about a half. One half a pump of the IT CC cream. Mix that between my fingers and apply it to my face. I think right off the bat, you can see it does have more of a tint than when I was applying that on. And same thing, I am going to rub it in like a moisturizer or like a sunscreen on my eyelids, on my under eyes. little tricky just doing one half of my face blend that neck in a little bit and what I do here is so I don't get crazy makeup lines in my hairline there I will just sort of pat and absorb and make that a little bit of a nicer smoother transition Also, I don't want heavy layer on my eyelids, so I will just, there. Okay, here is the Elta mixed in with the It on this side, Elta plain on this side. I think you can see a little bit extra coverage here. Again, right now both sides are very, very glowy, very tacky. I will need to let this set down for about 15 minutes before going in with the rest of my makeup. Most days, this customized blend is all the foundation I will need. However, if I do want to go in with a little extra coverage, this provides a really nice primer, actually. Um, I can either add a little tiny bit more IT CC cream or even go in with my favorite, a light layer of my favorite foundation, the Physician Formula, the Healthy Foundation. Again, because these have the same dose per pump, and they're both mineral sunscreens, and they have the same consistency, they are ideal to blend together to get a customized SPF with a little bit extra tint for a foundation-like effect. Now, if I wanted a heavier coverage, I could go on with three pumps of the Elta and two pumps of the It. Or, you know, some days I just go in plain with the Elta, let that set, that then becomes my primer, and I can put foundation over it. So I am going to come back in 15 minutes and do the rest of my natural makeup, and we will finish up. Okay, so it has been about 15 minutes, and I wanted to show you what it looks like after it has set down. Again, this side of my face is just the Elta MD tin, um, tinted sunscreen. And on this side of my face, I have the Elta MD mixed in with a little bit of it. Two pumps of Elta, half a pump of it, two and a half pumps of Elta. I think you can see the difference in the tint and in the coverage. And 
so I'm gonna make a couple of extra comments and then finish up my natural makeup and then we'll be done. Couple of extra comments. You will note that I did put sunscreen on my eyelids and my under eyes. If I were using a chemical sunscreen, I could never put it anywhere near my eyes. It would be way too irritating, but the mineral sunscreen I can use on my eyes, which is another reason I really love mineral sunscreen. Also, you will note that I did not bring the sunscreen down my neck. You need a quarter of a teaspoon of sunscreen for your facial area and another quarter of a teaspoon of sunscreen for your neck. So I was just using my quarter of a teaspoon, so I did not really bring it down my neck, but please, you must take care of your neck. So I am going to use my Coats Tinted Mineral Sunscreen on my neck. One quarter of a teaspoon, I will apply it right now. When you're taking care of your skin, always bring all your skincare and your sunscreen down your neck. Now this Coats is not quite as tinted as, and on the ears, okay. The Coats is not quite as tinted as the Elta, but it's fine for my neck. Okay, I wanted to make sure to make those two points. So here is the tinted, here is the plain, in order to even the two sides out. Right now I am going to go in just with a little tiny bit, and I mean tiny, like a drop of the um, IT CC cream. And I will need a mirror. And I'm just going to even out the coverage a little bit. Right, now that I have my coverage evened out, and now this is going to be a little bit tacky as well, but I want to finish my makeup on, so I will just, I'll take some of that tackiness down with a powder. I'm going to go in just with some very natural makeup. I'm going to use my Pixi Peach Corrector. Nice and peachy. And I just put a little bit on my finger, mix it together, warm it up between my fingers and apply that in the corners of my eye just to take some of that dark blue away. Can you see how nicely that corrected that blue area? And then one of my favorite products, which nobody ever talks about, I'm not sure why, my Garnier Anti-Dark Circle Roller Ball. This is, this lives in my purse. This is just, it's, it's sort of a concealer slash brightener slash correct. It never, it will never cake up and it does not crease. This is something I put on every day. And again, this is a very natural, almost no makeup makeup day. So I'm not going in with heavy concealers. Okay. You can see how that's nice and brightening. Okay, so let's go in. I'm gonna go in with my Hourglass Mineral Veil. This is my EcoTools Fluffy Blush Brush. I'm really gonna tap it off. And I'm just gonna to touch that to the areas that I'm gonna be applying um, my bronzer and blush. That hourglass veil is an amazing powder. I love it. It'll take the tack down without taking the glow away. Let's warm the face up just a tiny little bit. My Physician Formula Butter Bronzer this is just a perfect bronzer. This is in the color bronzer. It's very natural. It's not orange looking. I use my Real Techniques fluffy blush brush. And let's just warm the face up a little bit. I'm not contouring. You don't want your face to be a flat color. This just gives me a little bit of definition, a little bit of warmth. 
You always want to go down your neck and con to, cur to connect your face with your body, right? Okay, for my nice natural summertime look, I go in with my Milani Baked Blush in the color Luminoso. Oh, I love this color for summer. It's so bright and cheerful. Peachy pink, glowy. You know, I love to I love a good glow. And when you use this nice sort of glowy blush, you really don't need to go in with a, I don't feel the need to go in with a highlighter. Especially on a natural almost no makeup makeup day. I already have some lipstick on. This is my number one favorite lipstick. It is the L'Oreal Color Riche Shine in the color Varnished Rosewood. It is my lips, but better. It lives in my purse. I'm not doing eyeshadow today. I'm just going to use my Physician Formula Butter Bronzer to give my eyes a little bit of shape and definition and make them look just a little bit more finished. That also helps sort of sculpt my hoods, push my hoods back. Every day, even on a no makeup makeup day, I will tight line my upper lash line. That just gives my eyes more definition. And it is something I do every day. I think you can see the difference. The right eye has the upper lash line tight lined, nothing on the left. It just makes the, gives the eyes a little bit more definition and makes the lashes look a little bit thicker. I'm gonna finish up my mascara and my eyebrows. We've all seen that. I don't wanna bore you. And then we will finish up this video with some final thoughts on SPF and foundation and sort of out the door of five minute natural face. Okay, makeup is done. I did my eyebrows with my Rimmel Brow This Way brow powder and a little CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow Mascara. And my mascara, light mascara, is my L'Oreal um, Lash Primer my L'Oreal Voluminous in Carbon Black, just a very nice light coat, super natural, easy, fast, out the door, almost no makeup, makeup look. Using just my customized, super high potency SPF. Four pumps of the Elta MD mixed with one pump of the IT CC Cream to give me a nice, radiant, light to medium coverage, full, protection SPF. I hope you found this video informative and I hope it helps you understand that SPF in foundation is virtually worthless and that every day you will need to apply an SPF of at least 30 under your foundation regardless of how much foundation regardless of the SPF that's listed on your foundation bottle. Okay, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. I hope I haven't sounded too bossy or too luxury, but this is something I'm really passionate about and I really think cosmetic companies are doing us a disservice by giving us a false sense of security by putting SPF in foundations when, in my opinion, once again, it's worthless. Okay, that's enough. I hope you found this video helpful and informative and enjoyable, and I really hope you hit that like and subscribe button and join our community here. We are having a lot of fun, and it is supportive, and we are all encouraging each other as we go through, as we go through the ages. With that being said, I hope you stay safe and healthy and have a wonderful day, and I really hope to see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye. Uh oh, the sun is coming out. Shoot, is the amount of sun. So that's the first two reasons.
I might have to put a towel up there. Um, Okay, that is why I hate as okay, that's too strong of a word. And one day you just you didn't have there I got a hair there. Hair. I am going to okay. So I am going to off camera do my uh, okay, let's wait a sec. 